First of all, thank you, Ginat, for insisting in having me in your forum. <laughs> it has been a long journey. Ginat first uh, contacted me in October, but life sometimes is difficult, and here I am. Indeed. Thank you, you Annalisa, for your wonderful. Thank you. I so appreciate it. When Ginat gave me this challenge, I was wondering. Um, after so many lectures that have been happening in this forum, what could Sorry, I, I don't know how to do uh, say uh, that could be different and at the same time use, useful for all of us? So I will be, uh, I will change a little bit my presentation. I had a small story to tell you, but I will go through that. I am a designer, a professional designer for many years and started uh, studying macrobiotics uh, eight years ago. And I was, I was fascinated, overwhelmed about philosophy of macrobiotics. But um, as I was going deeper in macrobiotics, I realized that macrobiotics was uh, unknown, was quite unknown for uh, of, uh, lots of people, in spite of being uh, taught in Portugal for more, more than 30 years ago. So macrobiotics mm -hmm. started in Portugal 30 years ago, 35 years ago. And many people have learned macrobiotics, but still it is quite unknown. And I started thinking, since I am a, a communication professional, I started thinking, why is this happening? What is the problem with the message? So could it be the inconsistency of the message? message? So it is quite easy to find different approaches to microbiotics in the internet. And it is, it's easy to people get confused about what is macrobiotics, uh, which are the goals of macrobiotics. Mm -hmm. This is a possibility. Uh, another possibility is the difficulty for people. Um, I have my notes, so <laughs> you will forgive me. I will have to read some. Uh, difficulty for people to integrate all the requirements of microbi microbiotics in their daily life uh, because it's, it's a bit complex and it demands a good amount of time in our daily routines. So that could be another difficulty. Also, uh, another thing I've, I've realized was the poor adherence, I don't know if, it is the, the right way to, to say this yeah. word, from professionals to the use of the word macrobiotics. It's quite often that uh, practitioners choose another word to describe their work, like natural, energetic, holistic, healthy, conscious. Many words define um, macrobiotics uh, professionals other than macrobiotics. Which means that there are many people working with macrobiotics, but their audience doesn't really know that they work with macrobiotics. And by doing that, this, we lose a huge amount of possibilities to pass the word and the knowledge. And at least, um, um, finally, sorry, uh, another point that I've been realizing through these years was that often macrobiotics is mixed with other holistic activities like traditional Chinese medicine or yoga or uh, several kinds of energetic therapies. So public, public doesn't know, doesn't really know what we are working with, 
Is it macrobiotics? It's a mixture. What is it? So this is also a problem in passing macrobiotics. But after, after giving a deep thought about all these questions, I really didn't feel that the reason why macrobiotics is not recognized was not in none of these reasons that I could find. Uh, again, looking to my personal experience, the, the, what really uh, keeps me fascinated with macrobiotics is its philosophy. It's philosophy. The yin and yang, five transformations, and nine stars key. I never gave, give, uh, I never give that much attention to food. That was never my, my main focus on macrobiotics. Philosophy was my focus. And eventually, I, of course, I started introducing um, many different foods in, in our family routines. And we realized the, the impact, the benefits of those new foods in our daily life. But I did that without being uh, strict, without being rigid, because to me, my main concern was to keep balance with my family, with my children, with my husband, with my friends. So I did all these uh, adjustments in our daily routines quite slowly and always respecting others. And with time, family and friends get used to eat strange foods in my house, but also they knew that when I went to their houses, I would eat whatever they gave me to eat. Food was never an issue with me and with my family and my friends. But everything in me and in my family changed towards macrobiotics philosophy and towards this understanding of the universe that everything is connected. And again, I, I kept on thinking why this, this such simple view on macrobiotics is not well um, received by the public. Where are we failing? After many years working with Portuguese colleagues and also foreign colleagues within macrobiotics, and after reading many books, many texts of uh, Ozawa and also Kushi, I realized that uh, macrobiotics um, was standing in what I call a paradox. And what is a paradox? A paradox in simple terms is the opposite of what we think is the truth. So to, to understand better, I will give you an example. Uh, the paradox of tolerance that was first presented by a, a German philosopher in 1945. And about tolerance, he wrote, unlimited tolerance leads to disappearance of tolerance. If we extend unlimited tolerance even to the intolerant, and if we are not prepared to defend the tolerant society from the assault of intolerance, then the tolerance will be destroyed and the tolerance with them. So philosophy is always a bit tricky and complex. 
So what was the conclusion of Popper? That society, tolerant society may need to be intolerant to protect its tolerance. So, but this doesn't mean that the society becomes intolerant. So this is a paradox. For it itself, a tolerant society should allow everything, but it can, it can allow everything. Otherwise it would, um, it would lose uh, its tolerance. Here's what one of the um, sentences I found in Ozawa writings. This is in Zen Microbiotics. And Ozawa says, this, this uh, has one of many sentences like this. Let me drink a little bit of water. The seven conditions of health and happiness cannot be realized without observing the macrobiotic direc directions absolutely. Observing these, direction, these directions sorry, is simple and direct. You can be the creator of your own life, health and happiness without relying on others. You can be independent and free. Physical, mental, and moral disease can be cured with macrobiotics, the product of a wisdom that is 5,000 years old. So I don't know what you are thinking, but this is a huge paradox. Although it's true that knowledge any kind of knowledge is a major driver of freedom of thought and action. So it is true that uh, we can be the creator of our own life, health and happiness. It is not true that only macrobiotics can allow us to achieve this freedom of thought and action. So, However, not being the only way of achieving this freedom does not invalidate the fact of macrobiotics gives us a, a huge um, uh, self-awareness and consequently greater freedom of thought and action. We, and we can find, as I told you, many sentences like this. So to me, then this is a personal re reflection. This paradox, when where we say to people, if you do this in this way, you will, you will find your freedom. It's, it has a huge complexity to, to pass and to, to build a long time uh, connection with this, with this kind of uh, philosophy. Because we are actually used to be free and at some point we feel so overwhelmed with thoughts about macrobiotics, about right and wrong, that it, it is overwhelmed. This is not freedom. If we, in every meal we have, we spend a, um, a good amount of time thinking if it is good or if it is, if it is wrong, if it is uh, in the season or if it is not in the season, if it will do good to us or if it will harm us, this is not freedom. This is the opposite. So, in my opinion, if we, if, we, uh, if we will be able to manage this paradox, to actually um, give this philosophy to people, 
but in a in a in a slightly different way i'm still thinking about it <laughs> not not sure uh, not absolutely sure about how we can do that i think we will um we will find a way of transmitting the, the powerful message of, ma of macrobiotics in a proper way in, and in a, in a definite, definite way. So just let me check my notes. Yes, and my final re remark about this, this paradox of freedom is that what is happening with macrobiotics is what for some of us may be a direction because my macrobiotics can be a direction for us to follow for others became a rigid route as if we were in a train uh, with all the stops previous, previously defined without freedom to decide to to this as i've been realizing through all these years these are two opposite ways of uh, of embracing macrobiotics as if it wasn't a direction or if it was a route a predefined route and these um Cre created through all these years, created a huge amount of um, of shock, of, of um, confront among people, among teachers, because those who consider macrobiotics as a predefined route often don't accept the other approach as macrobiotics as a direction. But both are right, both might, might be wrong, considering our own constitution, our own way of living, but that is freedom. So macrobiotic can't uh, offer freedom to people without accepting, accepting their freedom of, of uh, at some point, making wrong decisions or because that doesn't mean that that we are not macrobiotics just because we choose uh, a more free way of, of going through that direction so and having said that i i propose to talk a little bit about communication in a practical sense so this is the first point I want to, to um, leave clear to all of you is that each one of us, if we want to work with macrobiotics, we need to say to our clients, which is our uh, pattern, which is our way of embracing macrobiotics or any other uh, activity. People who find us in the internet, especially now during lockdown times, need to be uh, sure about what they will get from us. So, as I told you this, my, my personal view about this paradox, I am making clear for all of you which one is my, uh, which is my view about microbiotics. So you all know that macro, I've, I'm fascinated, fa fascinated about microbiotics, but at the same time, I find some difficulties in microbiotics. So this is clear for all of you. When we communicate to our clients, we need to give them a clear view of what they may expect from us. This is the first thing that often misses 
in a lot of communication. But this is an overall um, approach of communication. So I will give you uh, a few tips, practical tips about this marketing, um, especially digital marketing, is the first thing we have to, to define is to define our audience. We need to know to whom we are addressing. We are addressing to teenagers, to young women, to uh, lawyers, engineers, to whom are we addressing? Because when we define our audience, we will be able to adjust the words and the content of our communication. Teenagers, we will not want to read um, the, the same thing, the same sort of things that their mothers will like to read. This is important. So if we want to address uh, children or teena teenagers, we need to be focused on their times, on their languages. So tip number one, define your audience. Tip number two, talk about yourself. If we were, if we were not late, I would um, tell you a little bit of, of my history, but I had to compress it a little bit, but tell people why are you in macrobiotics? Because people connect with why, why we do things, why we are in this particular moment in our lives. Because people connect with why and not with what we are selling. There are many macrobiotics counselors around the world, but people connect with, with which one of them because of the why, because of the pattern of their life. This is also important. Tip number three. So tip number two, just to make it clear, tell your story to people. They will like to hear about you. Tip number three, keep your authenticity. It makes everything much easier. If we talk from our arts, we will never miss. We will never be caught in the, in the road because we will be ourselves. We will not be concerned about being similar or um, doing as like someone else does the things. We are authentic. Tip number four, create useful content. Many of us, when we start our own businesses, we start uh, spreading through internet information about the products we want to sell. But if no one knows us, if no one knows that we are an expert in our specific knowledge, no one will buy our product. So first of all, before starting posting, selling posts, selling contents, we need to build uh, useful content for the people who follow us. Uh, content that they can use in their, in their daily lives. So, yes, content that shows what you know and that sh by doing content, content that shows what we know, indirectly, we will tell them what we want to sell. And when comes the time to post uh, something with a direct sale, sell, they will be ready to read about it and maybe to make a buy, to, to buy the product. Otherwise, we will lose our energy 
And at some point, we will lose our hope and give up our business. Tip number five, stay present. When we are working in the internet, we need to, to post on a regular basis. We need to, to build texts in our blogs, in our social media, but attention, don't do the same text, don't post the same content in all your social media. Audience in Instagram is completely different, different from Twitter or from LinkedIn or Facebook. They are completely different. Our content must be adjusted to each one. You may be telling exactly the same, but adjust the wording, adjust the text, images, whatever, to each one of social media. Tip uh, number six, be consistent. So be present. Don't stay during one week. Don't post uh, five posts and in the month, month, next month, don't post anything. Don't do that. It's better to, to post one post every week than doing a lot in a short period of time and after, after that doing uh, nothing. But it's, it's much more uh, relevant to have good content then a lots of content. If you don't have time, if you don't know how to build good content, don't worry about quantity, worry about quality. Just like in macrobiotics, quality is much more important than quantity and quantity may change quality. So this is a rule also applied to marketing. If we, um, uh, how can I say this? If we attack our audience with a, a newsletter every day, they will end unsubscribing us. No one has patience to, to receive every day a newsletter. We need to be, it's important to think how do I react to others' work? What do I like in marketing from others? If you don't like it, it's most likely that your clients will not enjoy it, it also. So don't do to others what you don't like someone to do to yourselves. This is a good a starting point. Tip number seven, be clear, and this is related in, to what I, I told you a few minutes ago, be clear on how your services and fees are. If we are going to, to search in the internet, we like to have clear messages, as I told you before. We don't, we don't like to, to, to send an email to ask for further details. It's better for us to be clear and to deliver to our clients the most, uh, the most complete inf information we can deliver to, okay? Tip number eight, take care of your image personal and graphic image. If you don't know how to do it, ask for advice of a professional. Our image, the way we dress, the way we uh, take care of our air, the way where we work, the, the, the design of our posts, all of them, transmit a lot of information about ourselves. Think 
if that image connects with your audience, with the people you want to reach. If not, for example, imagine that our audience is um, women from 35 to 55 years old, women, professional women, lawyers, businesswomen, this uh, high, with high degree education, how can we be to, to, to reach them? How can we uh, get them to feel related with us? This is important. We don't need to be or, or to look like them. It's not that the point. But we need to be in balance with what we do and what we want to sell. We need to be professional. Okay? But this is quite, this is not as easy as it may seem, but it's really important. If someone, and you may, you may think about luxury products. Uh, luxury products, products are among um, the products, I don't know the word in English, but they are forged, is this the word? So contrafaction, is this the word in English? Yes? <laughs> so everybody wants to buy luxury products. If we don't <laughs> Clara is saying, no, I don't want, I don't want either. But you know, there are lots of fake, fake, fake luxury products selling everywhere. It's not because of the product, it's because of what they represent. Okay? Because people know that that is a fake bag of Fendi or Dior or something else but gives them an approach of what that luxury brand represents. And all of us are connected with this, with what brands and professionals represent. So be aware of what you want to do and to represent to your clients and see if your image, graphic and personal, is matches with what you want to achieve. And finally, tip number nine, have fun. Have fun in your work. And because life is um, too short to, to be lived too seriously. So have fun. And of course, last but not the least, uh, this is not a tip, this is a rule. Um, the quality of your work. If you don't deliver a good work, however good is your marketing strategy, you will end up losing your clients because the market will know that we are not good professionals and we will follow. So, and um, this is all I had to, I have to tell you, to share with you. I don't know if you have any question. I'm so I, unless someone else has a question, I do. I'd like to go back on the first of all, thank you. It is so nice, such a clear presentation. I really enjoyed it. I want to ask you just a little more about the direction. I've forgotten the exact words as opposed to the uh, train with the predetermined stops. Yeah, because especially when people are beginning and maybe you're not referring to that, people need, I think, uh, goalposts. Or, or, or structure, let's say. And even if we're talking about long-term practice, there's, 
you know, I'm trying to think about what you're saying and how much we can be free and how much we need structure. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I always give the example of raising children. When we have more than one child, we face the reality of how different they are, even uh, be born, borning of the same mother, of the same father, and having the exactly same context. How different they can be from each other. How do we manage that? My do daughters, for example, they are completely different from each other. I had to be two different mothers to be able to communicate with both of them. So, but going, I don't know if, so we need to respect integrity and diversity of each people we have in front of us. If someone needs a more um, oriented uh, counseling, we must be able to do that and to give. You will, de do, you, will, you will have to do this and this and that and then come back here from a month. I think we lost you. On and be exactly. Anybody but, else? But you also have to respect that person you will find in front of you that only needs a direction, that only needs to understand what macrobiotics has to offer to them to, under to better understanding himself, herself, and his choices in life. And I think that this is the real, the real value of macrobiotics. Give us a much more awareness of our choices. At least with myself, it was what happened. So I am aware, I am much more alive and present. And if we keep on focusing on foods and right and wrong, I, I am afraid that we will end up losing this ability of building our self-awareness of macrobiotics. I don't know if I um, responded to you, Ginnett, was I clear? Yes, and it's very nice because many times we forget about this message of freedom, which is really what it is. It's really the point. It so it's very nice, yeah. yeah. And at the same time, as I think you're saying, the way to get to it is through the first six levels. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you have a nice comment here. I hope she doesn't mind me sharing it because it was to me. Thank you for your part to you. I love listening. Here in the Philippines, macrobiotics is not a thing. Never heard about it until I read a book by an Indian author. I also love the macrobiotic philosophy and want to introduce macrobiotics to Filipinos. Bravo. And now you know how. <laughs> yes, and it's, it's good to understand the culture of Philippines. Unless you understand it, you will not be able to, to introduce macrobiotics. That's another uh, often mistake about macrobiotics, is not respecting culture and local traditions. And it's, in my opinion, is quite easy to embrace both. But as I said, if we keep on traveling by train, with all those previous stops, we'll not be able to look outside of the window and see other things. <laughs> Thank you so much. Any last questions, anybody? Just applause. I really there, appreciate it. I think Daphne, Daphne wants to, to ask something. We if have I, just, uh, Shugo, I think Shugo is here and is ready. So we have another four minutes. 
Yes. Plenty of time. Daphna, can you unmute? I don't, I, okay. I, yes, there yes. you go. Hello, Louisa, thank you very much. That was very interesting. Um, I'm always interested to hear what people are feeling along the way of their own evolutionary mm -hmm. development about macrobiotics. Because for myself, who started in 1971, and so now I'm nearing the 50 year mark, I have been through each stage of development where you, you, you know. You, you question, you deny, you, you move through all of these things. And I remember that Michio once said, you get to the 10 year point and you may think I've had enough. I can't do this anymore. He, then he said, mm -hmm. stay with it because it gets better. So mm -hmm. I just, I just, I'm always curious to see how people are developing, especially as they move along in age, because as a seven, as a 22 year old, my view of macrobiotics and what it is now at 72 is a lot different. In ways it's very more expansive and in other ways it's a little more structured. So perhaps everybody moves along in a different way, but my practice has developed that way. So I feel now that I'm more open, but on the other hand, my dietary practices seem to be more simple without even realizing it. So I'm, I'm curious about other people, how they feel in their development. Yes, I think that can happen in another meeting because yeah. now sugar is, but it is important. And I know that Clara, Clara Levine, yes. uh, in one of previous forums, she, she told us about her um, pursu pursuit in creating a, support, a supporting group within macrobiotics. This is a huge challenge oh, yeah. within macrobiotics. Although I know several different, different holistic activities, macrobiotics is the toughest toughest one, maybe because some travel by train and some travel by bicycle and they can't, and they, they never meet to share their, their experiences, Daphne. So at some yes. point, I feel that people feel afraid and they, they don't feel comfortable with their past mistakes. Mm -hmm. and they don't want to share. They simply want simply want to to change or to adjust whatever it is mm -hmm. on or their forget. own. Just move away, forget. Yes, yes, yes. And it's sad because our mistakes are part of ourselves. Exactly. Development. So, yes. Development. Mistakes and uh, right and wrong are both the same. The same building block of each one of us and we yes. we can't choose only a part of that thank you thank you thank you very much thank you. so thank you good. so much for listening all of you it was a very good group lots of people thank you and see you in another time thank you Guinness. Again, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Me. Thank you. Okay. And bye. kisses. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.